Good morning, we want to welcome you to our Sunday morning, December 10th. It's amazing how time flies. The year is almost over. But we want to thank the Lord for this day that you've given unto us, Lord, and this opportunity that we have to come into this building to praise and to worship him. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Father, we look up to you because we know that all blessings come from you. And Father, we ask you there in this day, right now, Lord, you will pour out your spirit inside of this room, outside of this room, Lord. God, the desire of our hearts once again, if that's your will, will be done on the earth as your will is always done in heaven, Lord. God, we want you to draw people to you. We want you to bring people closer to you. We want you, Lord, to turn the backslide around and to bring them back home, Lord. We want you to put out your spirit all across the land that people will understand and realize, Lord, that the time we're living in, Lord, and they will make their mind and they will we'll come back to you, Lord. But I pray that the angels in heaven will rejoice in this morning, Lord, for the scripture tells us that the, that the angels in heaven rejoice when a sinner come home. And we pray that many, many sinners will come home, Lord. Father, we thank you. Bless everything that we be said and done this morning. Use it for your glory and for your honor. And use it to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Father, we thank you. And we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He's under my feet. 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 Sit and he's under my feet. 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 He's under He's under my feet. 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 He's
Lord. We believe that there is power in your name, Lord. Oh, we know that every demon trembles at the mention of your name, the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Father, help us, Lord, to truly understand how much power there is in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give us the boldness, Lord. Give us the boldness to use the name of Jesus. With confidence, Lord. With assurance, Lord. The answer will come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What do we pray for those who are not here this morning because they are sick, bomb, Sally, Laura, and anyone else who maybe right now they are going through physical infirmity, but in the name of Jesus, we speak healing right now upon their body by the power of the authority of your mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your healing touch, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For your deliverance, Lord. Thank you for all that you are doing right now. There is nothing else for us to do but to just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. And we praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Nice to see you this morning. It was a worship to the Lord, and then my watch gave me a warning. It said, too much noise. Quiet it down. How can we quiet it down when we are in God's house and worship the King of kings and the Lord of the Lord? Amen. I guess I won't be able to take this watch in heaven because he won't, he's going to keep worrying me all the time because in heaven everybody worship the Lord and everybody praise his wonderful name. So I want to thank you for coming out, for being God's house this morning. Those who are watching the live stream, we are so blessed that you are watching. By. We would love you to have you with us in God's house worshiping together. So we invite you to come and to join together with us. Don't forget, we have food downstairs after the service. Make sure you stop by and get something to eat before you go home. And I always said, you know, just keep in prayer our Italian service at 2 p.m. May the Lord bless also their service. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Two weeks for Christmas. Time goes fast, is it? Looked like January was like yesterday, but we are almost the end of 2023. Who knows? Who knows? Praise the name of Jesus. I want to finish this morning my last uh, the sermon that I began last week. Um, I thought on my sermon, will, will the true Jesus stand up? Will the true Jesus stand up? And I mean, I'm not going to preach to whatever I preached last week, but I'm using as my text Philippians chapter 2. And in Philippians chapter 2, we have what is perhaps the greatest description of who Jesus really is. Like I said last week, there's so many different opinions about Jesus. Everybody seems to have an opinion of who this Jesus is. But we want to know the real Jesus. We want to know the true Jesus. Because eternity, eternal life, depends upon understanding who Jesus truly is. Now, I want to read a few verses. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6. Philippians chapter 2, Paul said, talking about Jesus, he said, who being in the form of God did not consider robbery to be equal with God. We saw last week 
The first thing that Paul speaks about Jesus is his pre-existence. Jesus was always God. His being, his form was divine. If you remember, I told you last week, there's two Greek words that I use in the scripture to trans that are translated in English as being as a form. One is the word morphe, and the other one is the word schema. Morph morphe speaks about the nature of, of something that never changes, always remains the same. The schema is what from time to time changes. So what Paul said, the form, the being of Jesus was always divine. Jesus was always God. And because he was, he, he was always God, he did not consider robbery to be equal with God because he always was God. So the first thing we know from the scripture that Jesus is God. is the second person of the Godhead. Remember, there's one God manifest in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And from the, from the time past, from the beginning, Jesus was God. Verse 7. But made him felt of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. Verse 8. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. The second thing that Paul revealed in this passage is the in Jesus incarnation. He was God, but there was a time in his life when he laid down his glory. He's laid down his attribute. He's laid down in power, and he became one of us. He became a fetus. The schema changed. The being always is always divine, but the schema changed. And he did it to die on the cross for us. So Paul speaks about the incarnation, the humanity of Jesus. But let me say something. When Jesus was on the earth, he was not part-time God. He was not part-time man. He was full-time God, and he was full-time man. But he willfully laid down his deity, his attribute, to live a life like we do and to die on the cross. God cannot die on the cross. That's why he had to become a man, to take our place. Now, verse 9. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name. Now one of the names. He has given him the name, which is above every name. The third thing that Paul revealed to us about Jesus is the exaltation of Jesus because Jesus became obedient to the will of the Father because Jesus humbled himself and he took upon himself the likeness of a man and he came and he died on the cross, even the death on the cross. The Father has highly exalted him. For this reason, see, God has exalted him because Jesus willfully came to do the will of the Father. Stephen Cole said this, because Jesus was willing to humble himself and be obedient to death on the cross, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, putting a stamp of approval on Jesus' death as the satisfaction of the penalty of our sin. The Father was pleased with the obedience of the Son. The Father was pleased 
That Jesus took my place and who took your place upon the cross. The Father was pleased that Jesus took the handwriting of ordinances which was contrary to us and he nailed it to the cross, removing him and taking out of this way. So because Jesus made himself nothing, because Jesus made himself zero, because Jesus emptied himself, the Father has now exalted him. In God's kingdom, exaltation. In God's kingdom, promotion. It works different than in the world. See, in the world, the more fame you have, the more power you have, the more money you have, the more political power do you have, the higher you go. The more famous you're going to be. In God's kingdom, it's the opposite. When you, become, when you make yourself nothing, when you humble yourself before God, when you surrender your life to God completely, and then God will exalt you, and God will place you to a place of exaltation. See, because Jesus humbled himself, God has highly exalted him. Not just exalted him, highly exalted. And let me say something, anything that you do for the Lord, any effort, any sacrifice that you make for him in this life, you will now lose your reward. When we're going to see him, he will reward you. And the Bible said, he will grant us and will give us places of authority in his, in his kingdom. He said, the Father has highly exalted him. The Father has given Jesus the highest exaltation possible. There's no greater exaltation, no, there's no greater honor that Jesus could have received. But the Father gave it to him because of his obedience. And the Father has given him the name. You know, the scripture tells that, that when Jesus, even, even before, when, when the angel announced to Mary the birth of Jesus, God did not let Mary and Jesus choose what the name of the baby was going to be. God himself gave the name. In fact, the angel said, you shall conceive, bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Jesus was a name chosen by God the Father to be given to his son when he emptied himself and he came. And Paul said that God has given him the name. There's no other name except the name of Jesus, which is above every other name. I don't, I don't know if you know this. There's no other name like the name of Jesus that draws people closer, but also drives people apart. Like I said last week, there's no name that is more polarized than the name of Jesus. You could love him. You could hate him. You could draw closer to him and those who love him. Or you could drive you apart to hate him and to do anything to try to despise him. But the Father has highly exalted him and give him the name. There's no other name. I know in this world there's so many different names. But in God's eyes, there's no name except the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow 
of those in heaven and those on the earth and those under the earth. Verse 11. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now the question we need to ask, when is this come to pass? Because today, not every knee bows down before Jesus. Not every tongue is confessing Jesus as Lord. There's a lot of people in the world that refuse to acknowledge Jesus. There's a lot of people in the world that refuse to bow their knees to him. So when this prophecy, when this word that Paul has spoken through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit come to pass, this word will come to pass when Jesus is going to come back again when jesus will come and he will establish his kingdom when jesus will come at the end of this age this prophecy this word will be fulfilled see today jesus is still the lamb of god that takes away the sin of the world today anyone has the opportunity to accept or reject jesus Anyone has the opportunity to draw closer to Jesus or to run away from him. God will not force salvation. God will not force his will on anyone. God is giving us free will to choose what we are going to do with Jesus. But the day is coming when this choice is going to be taken away. And those who refuse on this earth to bow down before Jesus Christ. Those who refuse on this earth that, that, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Those who refuse to lift their voice and say, Jesus, you are Lord. Those going to have to do it. Even against his will. Now, I, I said this a few weeks ago. That every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. He's not saying that every tongue is going to confess Jesus, you are the Savior. No. Every tongue will have to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And like I said a few weeks ago, only seven times we found in the scripture the expression Jesus is Savior. And I think 66 times we found this expression, Jesus is Lord. What does it mean? Jesus is Lord. Lord comes from the Greek word kurios, which means absolute ownership and control power. And is the, is the translation of the Old Testament, Jehovah. So God doesn't want you to confess Jesus as Savior. God wants that every one of us, we come to the realization that Jesus is the Lord of my life. Jesus died on the cross for my sin. Jesus paid the price for my penalty. And because Jesus purchased me, on the cross. I don't belong to myself anymore. I belong to him. And God wants us to go to Jesus and say, Lord, I surrender my life to you. You are the Lord. You are the owner of my life. I'm going to do whatever you want me to do every day of my life. That's what it means that Jesus is Lord, that we belong to him. We are not our own anymore. We live for him because he purchased us. You got a car outside, right? It's yours. Why? Because you pay money. And now it's yours. The same thing with Jesus. He shed his precious blood so you don't belong to you anymore. You belong to him because he purchased you. Now go back to verse 10. Verse 10. 
that have the name of Jesus. You know, at the end of the tribulation, Jesus is going to come. He's going to find the Antichrist's army at the battle of Armageddon. He's going to defeat all of them. And then the millennium starts. And let me show it to you. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Begin of verse 11. Revelation chapter 20. Then I saw John talking. A great white throne. And him who sat on it. So John had a vision and saw a great white throne and he saw someone sitting on the throne. And he said that the earth and the heaven roll away to disappear. They are going to vanish. When this event is going to take place, this earth and the heaven that we see, they are going to vanish away. Because remember, they are going to be replaced by new heaven and new earth. And those, and there was found no place for them. Whatever we know is going to be completely, you know, Peter said they're going to be dissolved, destroyed with fire. And it's going to be replaced. Now, verse 12. And I saw the dead. Now, John saw the dead, small and gray, means regardless of their social status, regardless of their power, regardless of how much money they had, he saw the, the dead, small and gray, standing before God. I want you to picture this picture, this, in your mind. A white throne. God sitting on the throne. Jesus sitting on the throne. Because... The Bible tells the Father does not judge anyone, but he has given all the judgment to Jesus. And he said that books were open. There are books in heaven, more than one kind of book. And everything that a person does from the moment they were born is recorded in this book. That's why at the white throne judge, the books are going to be open. Because I guarantee you, they're going to, going to, they're going, you're going to have people standing before Jesus. They were trying to plead their case. They're trying to say, Jesus, I, I was a good person. I did so many good things. You know, I, 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 I always went out of my way. But the book is going to be open. And God will show in the book that whatever they're saying is not the truth. But, and another book was open, which is the book of life. Notice, and the dead were judged according to their works. By the things which were written in the book. The books are going to be what is going to testify against them. Verse 13. The sea gave up the dead that were in it. And hell deliver up the dead. See, every person who is in hell until the time when this event is going to place, hell is going to open up. And all the people that are in hell, they're going to come out. And they're going to stand at the white throne judgment. And each one, each and every one individually is going to be judged. And they were judged, each one according to the work. God will point out to each and every one of them the time when he gave them an opportunity to accept or reject Jesus Christ. God will point out to them how, how he went out of his way to try to bring them to salvation, but they stubbornly refused to accept Jesus Christ. They stubbornly refused to receive 
the gift of God. They told them, leave me alone. Let me run my own life. And they were judged, each one, according to his work. Verse 14. Then death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. The present hell is going to be cast into the lake of fire because the final destination of the wicked is going to be the lake of fire, where they are going to be tormented forever and ever and ever. And John called this the second death because it's the final separation between God and them. There's no more. They will never get another opportunity to make things right. Today is the day of salvation. Until we are alive, until a person is alive, they have an opportunity to change the destiny. But once a person is dead, the destiny has already been determined. And now verse 15. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. When I was born, when you were born, your name was written in the Lamb Book of Life. April 20, 1956, Placido Lentini was born. And God wrote my book in the, in the Book of Life. God will give, God gave me an opportunity during my life to accept Jesus. And I did. I respond. So my name re remained in the Book of Life. But there are people to whom God is giving opportunity to do, to accept Jesus. And when they reject it, God will erase their name from the book of life. That's why at the white throne judgment, those who, whose name was written in the Lamb of Life, and those whose name was not written because it was erased when they reject Jesus, when they refuse to bow down, and acknowledge him as Lord, the name was erased. And at the, white, at the white throne judgment, God will show them the day, the time, the hour when they said no to Jesus. No to Jesus. It's very important. Not only to have a proper understanding of Jesus, who Jesus is, but to acknowledge him as Lord. And right now, any person can do it. Satan cannot stop anyone from coming to Jesus. Only themselves can stop from coming to Jesus for whatever reason. Whatever reason. You know, it's interesting. Going back to Philippians chapter 2, verse 10, 11. Philippians chapter 2. And every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. Rome required by law that taxes be paid to the Roman government. It's not only required that taxes would be paid, but also that everyone, see, everyone was required during the Roman Empire. Everyone was required to say, Caesar is Lord. Every citizen of the Roman Empire, they were required to acknowledge that Caesar is Lord. Jesus is Lord. See, but the Christian, during those days, they knew that they were, there was not something they could, not, they could do because God wanted them only to declare that Jesus is Lord. So Christians all, all over the Roman Empire refused to acknowledge 
that Caesar was loved. Because to them, only one person was Lord, and that was Jesus. That's why they were thrown to the lion. That's why they were burned to the stake. That's why they were murdered. That's why they were decapitated. That's why they suffered so much pain and suffering. Why? Because they refused to acknowledge that Caesar was Lord. Because in their mind, only Jesus, only Jesus is Lord. And only Jesus deserved my total surrender and submission. Let's jump 2,000 years. Look at today. So many Christians, they want to, oh yeah, I, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to serve him on my own terms. I had a lady who come to church not long ago. She was looking for a church who had Saturday service. Because on Sunday, she's too busy to going down the shore and having fun and everything else. So she was looking for the, for the church who had service. They will not interfere with her having good time. Can you imagine that? I'm going to serve you, Lord, but on my own terms. Don't mess around with my fun. Don't tell me what to do and what not to do. I give you the crumbs when I feel like. I give you a little bit of my time when I want to. But don't tell me. Don't put too much burden on me. Otherwise you won't see me anymore. Jesus. I want you to know that. Go verse 12. Verse 12, verse 10. Let me see. Verse 10. Give me 10. Know that those in heaven, those on the earth, and those under the earth, one day, they will bow down before Jesus. They refuse to do it on this earth. But they're not going to get away with it. One day they will do it. I want to show you. Oh, Richard, did you find the video? I don't know if you even follow them, but they're having a, since last week, they had a, something called COP28. It's going to run until the 12th. Tomorrow, I think, is going to be the final day. And they are gathered together in Dubai, world, you know, to discuss how to save the planet, how to save the earth. They're discussing what, needs, what must be done before 2030. So they say we have seven years. To bring it to pass. How long is going to be the great tribulation? Seven years. And I want, you, uh, I want you to listen to what King Charles said. I, I'm not going to listen to all his speech. But the last two minutes of his speech. Because it falls into what I'm trying to tell you. Listen to him. Some important progress has been made, but it worries me greatly that we remain so dreadfully far off track, as the global stock take report demonstrates so graphically. The dangers are no longer distant risks. I have seen across the Commonwealth and beyond countless communities which are unable to withstand repeated shocks whose lives and livelihoods are laid waste by climate change. Surely, real action is required to stem the growing toll of its most vulnerable victims. As I've tried to say on many occasions, unless we rapidly repair and restore nature's unique economy based on harmony and balance, which is our ultimate sustainer, our own economy and survivability will be imperiled. 
we are carrying out a vast, frightening experiment of changing every ecological condition all at once at a pace that far outstrips nature's ability to cope. After all, ladies and gentlemen, in 2050, our grandchildren won't be asking what we said. They will be living with the consequences of what we did or didn't do. So if we act together to safeguard our precious planet, the welfare of all our people will surely follow. And we need to remember, too, that the indigenous world view teaches us, teaches us that we are all connected, not only as human beings, but with all living things and all that sustains life. As part of this grand and sacred system, harmony with nature must be maintained. The earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. Sorry, King. The earth does not belong to us. That's true. Because the earth belongs to the Lord who created. And we don't belong to the earth. We belong to God. We belong to Jesus. That's why God created us. He created us for himself. He created us to praise and to worship him. But listen to me. Whatever he said, it should not surprise you. Because if you read Romans chapter 1, Paul tells us that in the last day, people will, will love the creation rather the creator. And that's what's happening today. Not just today, but for the past whatever, 30, 40, 50 years, we're putting the earth at the center and we worship Mother Earth and we bow down to Mother Earth and we refuse to worship the King of Kings and the Lord, the Lord. The earth belongs to God. We don't belong to the earth. And men like him, and all those in the audience, if they don't acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord, why we're still on this earth, or before they die, or before the rapture takes place, one day, they're going to have to stand before Jesus. And one day, they will have to bow down before him. And one day, they will have to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. They will. Paul tells us things in heaven, things on the earth, and things under the earth. They are going to bow down. They will. They will. And acknowledge that he's Lord. God does not need me and you to protect the earth. The Bible tells us that as long as there's life, we are going to have the four cycle, spring and summer and fall and winter. They will not cease. God will make sure. But see, remember when the disciples went to Jesus and they said, Lord, when, when are this thing are going to happen? And what will be the sign of your return and of the end of the ages? The first thing that Jesus said, beware that no one will deceive you. Deception. The first sign that Jesus said we must watch out is deception. 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 The whole world is being deceived right now with this things about global warming and all these things and everything else that cannot be proven scientifically, but it's a trick of the enemy. It's a trick of Satan to keep people away from the right focus, which is Jesus, and putting it someplace else. 
some place. Let me finish with this. Let me read this verse. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. It speaks about coming of the Lord. Now, this is going to happen at the end of the seven-year tribulation period. Remember, the, tr the rapture of the church happened seven years, at least seven years before this event. Whatever I'm going to read, this is the second coming, when every eyes will see him. When Jesus will come at the rapture, not everyone will see him. Only the believers are going to meet him in the air, and they're going to be taken, the Father's out. But look what it said, verse 11. Revelation 19, 11. Now I saw heaven open, and behold the white horse. And he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judged and makes word. That's Jesus. Verse 12. His eyes was like a flame of fire, and, in, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. Verse 4. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called. Now, it said John saw that he was wearing a robe dipped in blood. Some Bible scholars believe that this is the blood that he shed on the cross as a witness and as a testimony of those who, were, who are going to see him, that he was the one who died for their sin. And his name is called the Word of God, 14. And, in, and the arms in heaven, which is us, all those who are going to be raptured, we're going to come back with Jesus. We're going to follow him. We, we are not going to fight. He's going to do the fight. We just come. We are the bride of Christ. So we're going to come back with him. And also the arms of the angels. And the army in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, follow him on white horses. You better sharpen your horse's, horse, horse's skill because one day we'll be riding on white horses. Verse 15. Not out, not out of the mouth goes a sharp sword that with it, with it he should strike the nation. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself tread the vine press of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty God. And lastly, verse 16. Remember, God has highly exalted him and given him the name, they have the name of Jesus. Everything's in heaven, on the earth, and under the earth. Mass bow down and must confess to Jesus Lord. John said, and he has on his robe and on his right and on his tie. The whole world will see it. They will see that this guy was coming riding on the horse. He's got a name written on his tie. And the name is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's the ultimate king. Is the ultimate Lord. Who is Jesus? Will the real Jesus stand up? We're getting closer to Christmas when uh, God once again, this could be the last time, remind the world about his son. So Jesus was God. He always was God. He humbled himself. He became a man to die on the cross. The father exalted him, giving him the name, and he's coming back again. And when he will come again, those who refuse to acknowledge him will have to. They will have to confess that Jesus is Lord, but it's going to be too late for them. So if you know someone who is stubborn and refuse to analogy, just pray for them. That's all I can tell you. We cannot save them. I wish we could. But pray for them all the time. I pray for my daughter all the time. Not only, she's always on my mind. She's also on my toes. And no time goes down that I, be, Lord, bring her to her senses. Bring her back home. Do the same thing. We don't know when the trumpet's going to sound. But until it doesn't, they can still come to Jesus. They can still 
Acknowledge him as Lord. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Let's keep praying for them. Father, thank you. Thank you for reminding us who Jesus really is. I try to do my best to let people know who this Jesus is. Is the real one. Is the true Jesus. It's not like the many false Christ, a false Messiah that you warn us will come upon the earth. But it's the real one. It's the genuine one. It's the only one. And Father, right now, our heart, Lord, is aching. Because the people who stubbornly refuse to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord of their life. And Father, we bring them before you right now. We lay them at your feet. And we ask you to do whatever it takes to bring them to Jesus, to open their understanding. To bring them to a place they will make up their mind. Now, if you here this morning and you never acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord, just where you're sitting down, just say, Jesus, I understand that I'm not my home. I belong to you because you died for me. And right now, I want to acknowledge you as my Lord. That's all it takes. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall confess Jesus, Lord, will be saved. That's how simple it is. Just do it. Just do it. You were watching the live stream, the same thing with you. Is Jesus the Lord of your life? If it's not, make him the Lord of your life. Eternity depends upon this. Let's all stand up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
we worship you. We worship you. God, I pray that you use us to be proclaim our good news. That when the time comes, when the opportunity is presented to us, that we are not ashamed. We are not embarrassed to tell someone how much Jesus loves them and what it did for them. God use us that before it's too late, they will come home. They will come to you. Thank you, Father, for everyone who came out. Those who were watching the live stream. I pray that you bless them. I pray that you keep them. I pray that you make your face to shine upon them. I pray that you be gracious to them. And Father, I pray that you lift up your confidence for each, every one of them. And I ask all this in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.